Hey everybody, this video can save you years of time if you'll follow the directions we have here for a full search engine optimization tutorial. Uh, Ricky and I run a network of niche sites. We've built a lot of them with all organic traffic. You know, we get some social media traffic and from other sources, but the vast majority of the traffic that we have for our sites comes from Google. Yeah. And we have written thousands of blog posts between us. And uh, we have seen for years how each and every blog post performs. And so in this video, we wanna share with you our real data of how our websites are performing and what's working for us to get to the top of the search engines. Yeah, so let's talk about some of the things that, um, that can help some of the search engine optimization um, techniques out there that, that are you know maybe kind of important, but maybe not as important as you think they are. We're gonna start with some of those. Most people think this is what SEO is. So we're gonna talk about these really quickly and yeah. why they maybe don't matter. And then we're gonna to get to the stuff that like, actually will get you ranking on Google, right. what actually works. First of all, we are going to go ahead and link to, there's a document that's put out by Google. It's a Google search engine optimization starter guide. We're gonna link it to this, it's a PDF. It goes through a lot of this stuff. Um, these are kind of the boxes to check. But again, don't worry about checking every box. It doesn't matter that much. So number one, we've talked about this in other videos, link building, okay? Um, having links from other authoritative websites that link to your website helps. It will help. It will benefit you. Is it worth spending the time to write guest posts all over the place and um, use shady tactics and maybe mm -hmm. pay for backlinking? No, it's probably not worth the time and money. Um, yeah, and in our last video, I showed an example of, of one of my sites mm -hmm. that has 18,000 backlinks to it, and I didn't create any of them. Yep. Links will just come to your content over time if you're creating killer, awesome content constantly. That's right. So creating a sitemap. So, um, Another one of those things everybody thinks really matters, uh, create a sitemap, submit it to Google search or webmaster tools. Um, what is the benefit of having a sitemap? Yeah, so a sitemap is really just, it's a little file that the user will never really see, mm -hmm. but it really just tracks all of the pages that you have on your website and how they're organized, just to make sure that Google sees all of the pages that you have. That's really the only purpose of the sitemap. But this is again, one of those things that people are like, oh, I've gotta have a sitemap. I'm gonna get this bump in traffic because if I have a sitemap and it's just, you know, yes, you should do it, but uh, if I were to spend the morning either making a sitemap or just writing another really awesome, just write an awesome post. That's right. If you have a normal organization of your website, Google's gonna find you, you're just mm -hmm. fine. The standard blog structure, article structure that most of these WordPress websites are gonna follow, Google's gonna be able to find it just fine. You can mess this up. Uh -huh. I bought a website called knifeup.com a few years ago. The reason I bought it is because when I saw it was for sale, I noticed, holy cow, they have a major error on their homepage so that they have like hundreds of articles that have no, they're abandoned. Like there's no way you can't get to, to you can't yeah. get to them from the homepage. And so Google is gonna hammer these posts. They are not gonna rank well. And uh, sure enough, I was right. I bought the site, I put it on a reasonable theme and just fixed that. And I mean, just saw a massive spike in traffic immediately. Right. Next is page load time. I've obsessed over this. It is important to have a fast loading site. But you know what, it, unless you have thousands of articles on your website, spending a whole day getting your website to load from two seconds to one second, not that big of a deal. It's yeah. just really not. So when you're building a niche site, this, shouldn't, this should only be on your radar in terms of, you know, make sure you have a reasonably fast server, you're using, you know, updated WordPress and a decent theme, and you size down your images. If you do that, your site's gonna load just fine you'll rank, don't obsess about this. If you have thousands of pages, then ooh, shaving off a tenth of a second could be a, an important change. Sure, yeah. Okay, the next one, um, switching SEO plugins. Obsessing, going back and forth. Oh, this SEO plugin's better than this one. I just read a new article saying, no, this one's better now. Um, and obsessing about which plugin you use. Um, honestly, it's just not gonna make They aren't even doing that much for No, you. they're not. Uh, the, the, these SEO plugins, I mean, you need to have a title, uh -huh. you need to have a description, 
and you need your content, yep. Google's kind of got what it needs. <laughs> um, uh, you, these SEO plugins, I think people feel like, oh, silver bullet, it's just SEOing my site for uh -huh. me. And it's like, it yeah. can do some important things, sure. and I have them, but uh -huh. it's not, uh, not a silver bullet. Right. So... Um, you know, we've, on a lot of our niche websites, we'll use the Yoast SEO plugin. Mm -hmm. Um, a That's lot good. of our students obsess about the score that Yoast gives them on a post yeah. and they'll spend an hour after writing an article to make it turn trying green. to, yeah, making it turn green, right? Making the, the score go up and really it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. It's, you know, helpful. That's it. Yeah. Meta tags. So when we talk about keyword research, a lot of people interpret that to mean, oh, I've got to write that keyword a bunch of times on my page, mm -hmm. um, and I've got to write these tags in WordPress as these tag things. Guess what? Google stopped reading those tags years ago. They will do absolutely nothing. I never even filled them out. Mm -hmm. But However, keyword research is, of course, very important but not in the way you may think. So the example that we were thinking of earlier is let's say I have a website about um, about raising purebred dogs, right? And uh, I find, ooh, a lot of people are searching, um, you know, how to raise purebred dogs. That's the keyword is how to raise purebred dogs. And then you write something else that's like, uh, you know, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, quick course on dog training or something. I don't know, something like that. It's just, it's not using the exact words and stuff. Google is gonna figure it out. You know, if the keyword is tutorial and you use crash course, not a problem, it's gonna be fine. Google's gonna know if your content is related, if you've done a reasonable job of writing the article. Right. The next is just have at least one nice image on the page. It looks ugly if you don't have any images in your article. Mm -hmm. SSL is one we've been getting a lot of questions on. Um, I was curious about this too. Google said it sort of is a ranking factor, a tiebreaker at least. Um, and so we've switched now three, four sites Most over sites. to yeah. SSL and we didn't see a bump in traffic up or down on any of them because right. of it. You know, do it. It's good. Mm -hmm. Might as well. Um, but don't spend a day doing this. If your page only has, if your website has 20 articles on it like this is just not a big deal yep um and then another one people feel like they need to completely update and change their website design um that the current design is what's keeping me from getting more traffic really it's rarely the case rarely yeah if your site looks like it was built in the 90s it was built in html or on solo build it or mm -hmm. some kind of old technology and it just looks old yeah sure you know what Migrating it to WordPress and putting it on a modern theme is probably worth doing. Good news. Now we get to get into not the technical stuff, but the things that like, this actually makes a difference. This is going to help you rank on Google. This is going to help you to do that. Go from zero to 66,000 page views a month in one year with no link building and only writing 24 articles. Yeah. It can be done uh, if you follow these things. So these are the important parts. Forget all that other stuff that people want you to obsess about. If I could get you to do one thing, one thing to completely change your search engine optimization, write long posts long ones. Look at this. This is from backlinko.com. They did a study. They uh, looked at like, what, 10,000 uh, blog posts or uh, articles on Google or searches on Google. Searches, yeah. And they saw how many words were in the number one rank, number two rank. Look, the number one and number two position on Google are on average, you know, 1950 almost 2000 word long blog posts and that's the average so half of them are above that mm -hmm. that that's long blog posts i promise if you haven't started writing your website when you start writing a 2000 word blog post it's going to take you a while to get used to that it's going to feel like whoa this is really wordy it's good yeah and you notice number 10 here way down it's still well and it's still 1750 words yeah how many people i mean so many people feel like well i can answer this question in 500 words is that mm -hmm. good enough no it's not good enough you're right you can answer the question in 500 words so let's answer the next three questions that this reader has let's go into a little bit more detail on something um if you write a 500 word blog post you're probably not going to be anywhere near page one 
Exactly. So just today I wrote a blog post on uh, the best uh, dirt bike helmets. And so, you know, could I answer that in three words? Yes. Fox Comp 5. <laughs> and that's my <laughs> blog post. But if I write that, it's not going to work, obviously. And if I write just two paragraphs, you know, explaining why I think the Fox Comp 5 is good, you know, it's okay. But then they're just like, eh, whatever, some dude's opinion. But then what if I say, hey, if you just came for this and you want a quick answer, it's the Fox Comp 5. But then I think, okay, if he leaves my page now, what's the next thing he's going to Google? And so it's like, you know, uh, how to determine the fit of a dirt bike helmet. Uh, what dirt bike helmets are, are safer than others? How long does a dirt bike helmet last anyway? Uh, what brands are the coolest ones? I think of what other questions he's going to ask after I tell him what the dirt, best dirt bike helmet is, and I make subheadings, and I answer those. Yep. And then, bang, I can easily get to 2,000 words. And I think that actually leads us kind of to the next point, which is about <laughs> how we structure the content of our blog posts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a headline that, um, and, and I guess we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we've got sort of a, a, a first line, you know, maybe one or two sentences that's kind of like, yeah, a little bit of an introduction, something a little bit catchy. Mm -hmm. And then paragraph two, none of our paragraphs are very long. Mm -hmm. Paragraph two, we are going to answer the question very clearly. Okay. And um, usually we're going to, the sentence that answers the question, we're going to bold it. Okay. We want it to be very clear. Here's the answer to the question that you came to this page for. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to, we're going to go in and we're going to write, yeah, here's a perfect example. It's bolded right here. This, whole this is the is answer. Boom. Uh -huh. But then we're going to go through and start answering other questions. We're going to... Sometimes the answer is, well, it depends, right? What's the best dirt bike helmet? Well, it depends. Um, so paragraph two is going to say, this is my answer. I think all around this is the best dirt bike helmet. But now I'm going to go into... Here are some of the factors maybe you should consider. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one's going to last longer, but it costs three times as much. Okay, that's something you could go into detail on, and we're going to go through and create all these subheadings and write just a whole bunch more content. Um, by breaking your articles into these sections with subheadings, it makes it very, very readable. It makes it um, like they're reading a whole bunch of really short articles, and mm -hmm. people like that a lot more than reading one big, long block of text. Mm -hmm. If you haven't noticed yet, what we're saying is the way you rank on Google is you help people out. Yeah. And so the another like big thing that you got to make sure you're doing is that your post is answering a question and is not just something you got to get off your chest. Yeah. Um, I'm not writing blog posts like, you know, why I hate the motocross guys, you know? I'm a trail <laughs> riding guy and why I just hate those dudes. But when we see new bloggers I mean, it's post after post that's just opinion. Nobody is Googling, does Jim like the motocross guys? <laughs> Nobody cares about that. They don't want to know that opinion. They want information. They want to feel empowered. They want to find something out. That's why they ask their question to Google. And your job is just to help them out. So be sure that the, the articles you're writing are answering people's questions. We've talked about this lots of times. Yep. Really simple process to do keyword research. We have full videos on this. If I want to write um, something about dirt bikes, um, I just hit dirt bikes and I hit uh, enter on Google. And then look, suggested searches, dirt bikes cheap. Bang, I'm going to write a, a blog post about, you know, how to buy dirt bikes on the cheap. That's my blog post, etc. I'm finding what people want to know and then I'm answering it. That's right. And honestly, you could follow any one of these and see what related searches come up next to that one. So if you follow, you know, yeah, gas dirt bikes. Um, and now you've got, here are all the things that people want to know about gas dirt bikes. Ooh, best gas dirt bikes for 10-year-olds. Perfect. Awesome. It's yep. a great good, keyword. Good article. All right. Now, um, another kind of cool tip for coming up with, um, with good keywords and good articles is go look out at your competition. Okay. Um, find the biggest site out there that's in that's in the closest niche to you, mm -hmm. and go look at some of their content, and maybe find some of their content that's a few years old. Um, find their top ranking articles, um, their best keywords, and you know write an update. 
I love it when I go to a blog uh, competition uh, for the same niche as me and they have the like popular posts section. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yes, Perfect. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are popular because they're just killer content and it's going to be tough to overcome. Um, but what I love seeing is when I find one of those that just squeaks by, you know, it's 1,100 words long and it's three years old and I'm like, gold that's uh -huh. awesome yep. go uh, write a better and a newer post yep um man there's so much we could talk about you know crafting good headlines is super important i'm just going to touch on that really quickly when you're writing a headline 60 characters max so it doesn't get truncated um and you just do something that clearly shows that you're answering their question but also it's got to have just that little spark of interest and flair to it. Um, if it takes a while to get used to writing good headlines, hey, you know what? Go steal ours. Not, we're not the best in the world. Go to cabinfreedom.com is the one Ricky's just starting his uh, a new niche site on. Uh, go to dirtbikeplanet.com. Um, go to incomeschool.com or improvephotography.com. Go to our websites and just kind of get some ideas. Mm -hmm. Get some flair for, you know, how are we writing these? Go, go look at the magazine next time you're in the grocery store and look at those magazines like one weird trick to have perfect skin or whatever. Great. It's They're using it because it's working to get people's interest. Clearly answer it and then have some flair to it. Yep. I really think that about covers it. So this is the stuff that matters for SEO. All the first things we talked about, those are, those are boxes you can check. Uh, like I said, don't worry about checking them all. Um, let's just, you know, write, write good content. That's what's going to matter the most. After you watch this video, I know you're going to go on YouTube and you're going to go look at uh, more SEO videos and they're going to say, you have to go do this link building yep. strategy and this and that. Man, for years we've been doing this, building other blogs, and those things do matter, but not nearly as much as these fundamentals. Go watch our video on keyword research tools. Uh, go watch our video on link building. Uh, we have so, lots of videos that really show how this process works. Yep. It's just about writing good content. That's right. And if you want to work with us and, and have us help you as you build your niche website, um, you know, come check us out. There's a, there's a link in the um, description below. But we have a product called Niche Site School where we'll actually work with you on your website. We'll provide a consultation. Um, we're we're going to get some information from you about what you're interested in. And we're going to show you, and actually we're going to sit and record a consultation, um, giving you feedback on your idea. And then we're going to give you our exact recipe for how we create awesome content, how to build the site. We're going to walk you through this, and it's a 60-day it's a program. And if you have an existing site already, yep. no problem. Come on over. Come to Niche Site School. We'll work with what you already have, show you why it's ranking well or what things need to change uh, to, to see it rank even better. Yep. Thanks, everybody.